church culture and aesthetics. Very quick anecdote. Because of having had the privilege of being in so many kinds of churches, experiencing so many Christian cultures, I have had the unusual experience of being in one building at two different eras of its usage. There is a church building in Concord that I don't know who the owner of the building is or who the original church was that used it, but it's a small, quaint church um, with a sanctuary and a dining hall and a, you know, a big yard. And it's potentially useful in a lot of ways. And when I met them, the people that were using it, um, it was 10, 15 people that um, had been meeting in homes and developed a wonderful opportunity to use the building in exchange for doing it landscaping. And so I would go and see them. They had a midweek meeting as well as a Sunday morning, a prayer meeting. And they had seating, the pews, pews? There were pews at some point, but they were seating. Um, and they kept it very simple. They, they didn't have a lot of resources, which is not good or bad. Um, the building itself had stained glass, which is beautiful. It had butterflies, which are a symbol of the resurrection present in a lot of medieval Christian art. Um, but very simple. Um, very sincere. I don't remember the worship. If there was worship, it was CDs and, you know, um, YouTube video kind of things. Um, the building was eventually bought by a very interesting group. Um, they were a group of believers from a country that is primarily Islamic. And so you don't meet a lot of believers from this ethnic group. So they're fascinating, just really different. And they came in and they brought confessionals and they brought lots of gold and religious symbology. And it became different. And I had the amazing experience of experiencing both things. Um, as a worshiper in the smaller Pentecostal church, as a person there is a as a contractor doing something totally unrelated to church um, at the other new place. So different, vibrant, different, both legitimate expressions of the church and of worship. Um, uh, one of the people that have been part of the smaller church that got a look at it, oh, I missed a piece here. The group that bought it, that is from a Middle Eastern country, a Christian group from Middle Eastern country, they had even said they were willing to consider some kind of hybrid, some kind of collaboration, some kind of sharing, which is amazing, a good thing to do if you can find a way in spirit to do it, because it's a way of breaking those artificial barriers that culture makes. Those culture barriers are not going to make as much sense in heaven, you know. And so they made that offer. And the person in question who wanted very cautious, I don't want to appear to talk ill of anyone, I'm just talking about a person's perspective. She said she could not spiritually be comfortable in a church that had religious iconography, that had statues and chalices and artwork and confessionals. She let the word idolatry slip from her lips. And I thought, either it's absolutely wrong and ungodly to have any sort of symbology or iconography in your church, or that was a little hidden iceberg in this person's religious culture. That is, I can't fellowship with believers if they have religious symbols, if they have historical, spiritual, liturgical things. Um, 
God is being worshipped right now in every country in the world, in every culture in the world, and being worshipped in languages of man that we don't understand and languages of the spirit we don't understand. And I believe it is primarily in the soul and in human culture where we say there is a line that the worship of God can't cross. Because I can't worship God like that, I don't think anyone can. So consider that thought. Heaven is going to look a lot like a bunch of things that don't look like they click right now, harmonizing perfectly in the presence of God. Every tongue, every nation, um, possibly every strange ethnic dance that's ever made you uncomfortable, simultaneously praising God. Thank you and bless you. If I have blessed you, equipped you, or encouraged you, please bless me by liking and subscribing. Thank you.